Future Now Show. Brought to you by the Club of Amsterdam. Hi, welcome. Uh, my name is Martijn Aslander. Uh, I'm 50 years old. I'm from the Netherlands. Uh, I'm a technology philosopher and I've been exploring the boundaries of the network and information age uh, for about 20 years. Um, I co-wrote a few books in the Netherlands that are pretty well known over here. Uh, one is about uh, the future of uh, work and organization. It's called Easycracy, which is uh, um, um, uh, opposed to bureaucracy. Um, and uh, and um, I've built a community, Permanent Beta, bringing, uh, bridging uh, tech uh, brains and culture. Uh, active in Tehran, in, uh, in, in the country of Iran, in the Netherlands and in South Africa. Uh, after that, um, we published a book called uh, Nooit Af, which is Dutch for permanent beta. And for the past two years in Corona times, um, I published with two others a, a new book called Ons Werk is Stuk, which is Dutch for our work is broken. And this is the topic that I would like to share with you guys. So um, this was an old topic that I was uh, fascinated by, by for years. So um, the network and information age is changing the dynamics of a lot of things. And um, I've always been fascinated by bureaucracy. I'm not against bureaucracy, but I think that a lot of uh, problems and challenges in society like healthcare, uh, education, climate change, are at its core, most of the times, bureaucratic problems because the knowledge is there, the information is there, the people is there, the urgency is there, um, uh, the technology is there, and somehow it's not bridged by old power mechanisms, uh, uh, lack of knowledge, lack, lack of networks and bridges. And uh, I've been studying it for a long time. So, how do you beat or bypass a bureaucrat? Well, the weapons of a bureaucrat are money and paper, or it doesn't matter if it's digital paper or physical paper, but this is, those are the tools that they use in their power mechanisms. But there's one thing uh, that you can do to confuse a bureaucrat, and that is not using money at all, and don't put anything on paper. Um, and I, I've, I've been exploring this, this brain fart for years. So what would happen if you would actually do things without the use of money and without paper? And this is where technology comes in. So uh, you can actually do a lot of things because you don't longer need an organization to get something organized. Uh, um, long ago, you needed buildings, instruments, machines, people that you had to hire to accomplish something. Thing, but because of the web, the dynamics of that changed. Um, in 2007, I was in the Netherlands one of the co-founders of lifehacking.nl. And lifehacking is about how to do more in less time, with less stress, at lower cost, with more impact. So that's pretty cool. And it's not per se about productivity. It's about an engineering approach to anything. So hmm, I'm, I'm doing this. How can we do that smarter or more efficient or more fun um, so i'm not a an, an, um, i'm not a, um, a programmer I, I don't even understand html but i'm i'm, I'm really fascinated by um, how to get information to connect it to be creative and how to get information capital i don't know if if, if i came up with that word or does, did exist before that but um, i've been studying because of my former work, uh, the dynamics of social capital in many ways. Um, and I give a few lectures on uh, conferences uh, for poor people. And then I tapped into the idea of information capital. Uh, so you could say that, that in network age, social capital is a kind of currency with, with other dimensions than, uh, than the monetary uh, currencies in the, in the economy. So in a network uh, society, we, we, you could say there's a social capital currency, but you could also say then that in an information society, um, information capital might be a currency, 
and let's figure out what the dynamics of that are. But then I noticed something interesting, and I've, I've, I've seen that for a very long time, but, but now I pinpointed on it. Um, most of the people are storing their information capital in old socks. So uh, with monetary capital, we put it on the bank, so you could use it with a bank account and, a, uh, 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 and to make a wireless transaction. But what if information is actually a form of capital that is very valuable, uh, but we cannot access it. And, and, and that was really fascinating. Most of the people who, are, who have been using a computer for the past 10, 15 years have a lot of information capital, but they don't know how to access it because it's stored in little closed silos called documents. And well, if you're on a smartphone, the computer that you have with you most of the times, and you want to find something that you once had or stored, most of the times you cannot find it rapidly. If you find something, it's folders, subfolders, and lots of documents. They're called PDF, XLS, PPT, and Doc. And when I dove into these aspects, those aspects, I thought, hmm, that's weird. Actually, we're still using the computer as a modern typewriter, emulating the 70s office dynamics to the modern age. So all the big office suites that people have to use from their bosses, and it doesn't matter if you're using Lotus or Microsoft or uh, Google, are actually based on the 70s office environment, but also the volume of information of the 70s and the speed of information from the 70s. But because everybody could publish because of the web, uh, the amounts of information exploded because of the smartphones, the speed of information and the web, the speed of information also exploded. But the software that we're using most of the times is not good enough to deal with information because it's document-based and not information-based. And I really find this fascinating. So for the past 40 years in Europe alone, I think we spend like a few thousand billion euros on IT. And most of the money went to the T guys and we forgot about the I, the I of information. And actually we never learned how to share information, retrieve it, enrich it, connect it, uh, uh, order it, reorder it, uh, tag it, uh, uh, add metadata and stuff like that. So actually, we never learned how to mine this very valuable source of capital called information capital. And information capital, it doesn't matter if it's strategic information, practical information, social information, uh, knowledge, stuff like that. If you don't, if you are not capable of as, uh, accessing this form of information, you don't get um, interest on it. And especially not compound interest because it's lying for that in all kinds of hierarchies in folders and subfolders in your computer. So I think we have to rethink what is work because in the Netherlands alone, we have more four or five million people who are using a computer for their work for more than four, four or five hours a day. And what we found out is that they're wasting 240 hours a year on searching stuff that they, they can't find. They don't know where it is. On top of that, they're uh, compensating 40 days a year for redoing stuff that, that they did before but forgot how to do it or where it is. And on top of that, an average computer user is wasting 40 to 400 hours a year because they don't know how to use a computer. So forget about digital transformation, digitization, web, tech, IT, cyber, whatever. If Joe Average in any organization doesn't have any actionable perspective to do something new, you can forget about all these new technologies and strategies. So we have to begin with the beginning. We have to learn how to operate a computer, how to operate a smartphone, 
and we need information awareness and information skills. So everybody's talking about this digital literacy thing, but I think that starts with information literacy. And nobody taught us ever how to deal with large quantities in a high volume and speed of information. And we need to fix that first. So where do you go to, to fix that? Well, not to the HR guys, because HR people are afraid of technology uh, because they, they're into people. Then there are also people who love technology. They're called nerds, geeks, IT guys, but they, most of the time they find that our people are pretty complex and uh, software is more predictable. So, so they're, they're, they're into that, but not in, into people if you know what I mean. And the bridge between those departments has to be built. But I, I don't think we can solve that. So I came up with an idea. I call it digital fitness uh, because we already know that if you're physically, if you're mentally not fit, it will affect your physical fitness. So if you have anxiety, depression, burnout symptoms, uh, post-traumatic stress, whatever, loss, sadness, tragedy, it will, if you don't pay attention to that, the body will keep score, as uh, Bessel van der Kolk uh, says. So then it will affect your body, your physical fitness. But I really think if you're using a computer for more than five hours a day or a screen for, to do your work, you have to be digitally fit to say mentally staying. So between, uh, so between digital fitness and men, uh, mental fitness, is also a connection. So I came up with a framework, a platform, an idea. We wrote a book about it on digital fitness. So, so we, we say, well, first, yeah, you need, it's five pillars. Uh, so it's a simple framework with five pillars and everything you could, uh, in the world of IT and technology uh, will fit in one of those five. What I always say, first you have to, the first pillar is digital awareness. If you don't know what, algorithm or a hashtag is you might be in trouble so you have to understand the basic dynamics of this network and information age that that are changing uh, changing the the ways a lot of things work then you have to focus on digital hygiene how to use the computer how to use the web uh, how to use a password manager uh, how to use email because uh, most of the complaints on in, in every work floor is uh, email email is like a fence that but we we just dump things over it uh, but but it it shouldn't be that way work and emailing shouldn't be the same thing so we we have to learn how to deal with that or uh, get rid of email uh, 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 and stuff like that and how to communicate with other people uh, in the field of work keep them up to date stuff like that and email is not the best way to do that so you have to fix your digital hygiene and somehow companies all, uh, and also governments neglect the aspects of digital hygiene and they're fully focusing on digital skills but digital digital skills should be more than understanding office 365 which is document centric and per se not suitable for dealing with large quantities of information so when you focus on digital skills and digital hygiene, then you can get to the holy grail, which is the fourth pillar of digital fitness. It's called personal knowledge management. This term will be popularized within three, four years, and everybody will talk about it with the same uh, passion as we used to talk about getting things done, GTD from David Allen. And personal knowledge management is um, um, an approach uh, to to build your own personal knowledge management system, how to store your contacts, your knowledge, your ideas, uh, your little notions. It's it's it combines a lot of disciplines uh, um, uh, together, and there's a lot of cool new software out there. And it's not about the tools, but you need also tools to do this. Uh, and those are tools like Workflowy, Miro, uh, Notion, Obsidian, Rome Research, and a whole new era of software that you can use to grab information and retrieve it rapidly anywhere you are on your mobile phone and to share it with others so this is the next level in dealing with computers i um, I, um, I predict so once you have your uh, if you have your digital hygiene in order and you have your digital skills in order you could use that 
to build on your personal knowledge capital. And if you invest in your own personal knowledge capital and system, um, you get compound interest on your information because a lot of people have no idea how valuable that list of participants is uh, from eight years ago at that conference that you attended. But you were there with interesting people and you can look them up again. But who of you touches an eight-year-old Excel file with a list of participants? So this new way of approaching information and software helps us randomly uh, uh, and uh, by accident um, figuring out how to, how to let that information uh, be combined and pop up by the software and the, and the things that you put in there. It's really interesting. You really should dive into that, but that's another talk. And if you fixed your digital awareness, your digital hygiene, your digital skills, and your personal knowledge management, then we have a, one more thing, a fifth pillar, and we call it using technology for personal growth and development. It's how to use technology in a smart way to become smarter, more aware, more fit with nudging algorithms. It's a bit of biohacking, a bit of quantified self. And if you combine those five aspects, then you could far more um, uh, grab the, 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 the possibilities of this network and information age. And most of the people that I encounter, I, I ask about 30,000 people in all kinds of audiences uh, who is using uh, a mouse to switch between two programs on the computer and who of you is using shortcuts. Well, 60% of all the people are using a computer have no idea uh, what keyboard shortcuts are. And there's a very good chance if you don't understand what command or alt tab means, that you also are not aware of 20 other things that really could help you have more impact with the machine you're already using. And somehow we forgot about that. And so this is the uh, the theme and the topic uh, that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm on for the past two years, teaching people to become digitally fit and how to, uh, to, to leverage uh, the information capital they, also, uh, they already have to build social capital. Because if you give your information away, you still have it, but you make somebody else happy with your knowledge. And this is building social capital. So if you're poor and you have access to a public library and to the internet, well, you only have to look on, uh, on Twitter to, to see what kind of questions somebody has. And if you help them out with information that you have, uh, you will build a connection. And if you, if you keep building that, you will also build trust. But if you build trust and you build a network, you build on your information position. So you get more information, better information, earlier information. So the more information capital you gather, the more social capital you receive. And the more social capital you have, the more information capital you get. And if you can be a billionaire in social capital and information capital, you, get, you also gain more monetary capital, but, it, but the paradox is you also need lots of it less. Because if you have access to people and you have access to knowledge, for a lot of things, you don't need money anymore because it's already around you. And this is fascinating. This, could, this really could liberate millions of people who are falling in the trap of monetary capital while we have uh, an abundance of in information and social capital, we only have to figure out what the dynamics of it are and how to uh, use it with the tools that we already have. So I can talk about this for 15 hours. That's my, my personal record. Uh, but uh, uh, today, unfortunately, uh, I'm only allowed to talk for about 25 minutes or so. But this is the core of the thing that I wanted to share uh, with this audience. Uh, I've known Felix for a lot of years. So I was very happy with the with the invite, and maybe we could uh, elaborate on the stuff that I just shared, and also uh, plan maybe a next session uh, that we can use to discuss uh, uh, stuff like that. In Dutch, we have dig digitalefitheid.nl, digitalfitness.nl, and um, within I think half a year we will build on the English in, for the English audience as well, and um, uh, on digitalfitness.com, but. Uh, um, um, in the upcoming year, uh, more and more of this stuff will be translated in English, uh, also uh, uh, our book.
when it comes to uh, to healthcare or education, uh, there are already people everywhere with a lot of knowledge, but they're not connected. Uh, and if you if if you make it easy for people to gather information, intel, actually, I'm advocating a personal intelligence agency for everybody, uh, because if you know who's doing what, where, how, and who has what knowledge, uh, well, then you can bridge and bring that together uh, far more rapidly and without the need of organizations. And of course, this is already happening worldwide. So uh, this is not new. But the new thing is, if we are more aware of the importance of learning how to deal with information, and, and what I'm stating, most of people are doing it, but have no idea how they're doing it, why they do it, and everybody is inventing it in its own way. And there are far more better practical solutions, especially in this field of pay, uh, PKM, personal knowledge management, that you could use to uh, to go faster uh, and uh, not like in being in a hurry. Uh, and I'm not saying speed is everything. Patience is already uh, also a very powerful weapon. But a lot of people are doing double work because they don't know that people that they have access to already have answers and parts of puzzles. Because every challenge on earth is actually a puzzle that needs to be solved. And by understanding and investing time and energy and skills in information capital and social capital, I think we can go much faster without the need of money. So also without the need of all kinds of hierarchical structures that are um, dealing with the scarcity uh, and the power dynamics behind monetary capital. In the name of our audience, I would really thank you very much and we hope to, to continue this, uh, this dialogue. Yeah, Maybe cool. Anybody with ideas, please. Let's share it and let, let's go a step further. Yeah, what I could do is uh, make a, a, a link mm -hmm. to a, a further uh, reads and videos of other people that are uh, far further than, than I am in this field. But uh, uh, yeah, I approach this P PKM uh, development worldwide as um, a tool for social and uh, uh, and information capital. And I think this is uh, the stuff that I can add to the worldwide discussion and Thanks. exploration. And um, it's really exciting, uh, Felix. Uh, I really wish that I had this stuff 20 years ago. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you very much for sharing. Yes, yeah, sure. Happy to help. And um, let's, uh, let's uh, meet again.